Hi everyone! Alright, it is time for another video and this week my video is not going to have anything to do with photography. Okay, maybe just like a tiny bit. I know, like how dare I? So you're probably wondering what the heck is going on on my face <laughs> right here. <laughs> I don't know if the video resolution is good enough for you to be able to see that this is actually three stitches on my chin from a punch biopsy that I had last week. So if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, you've probably seen a few posts that I made last winter in December when I was diagnosed with a stage zero melanoma, also known as a melanoma in situ. Yes, skin cancer. Now, I was diagnosed with skin cancer at the age of 31. And for a white person, I'm pretty dark, not actually blonde. I know, shocking. So backtracking a bit, back in 2012, a freckle on my rib cage caught the eye of a dermatologist who told me that I should keep an eye on it and if it grows, to come back. So I took a photo of it with a ruler and kept an eye on it for seven years. In my mind, I always thought that cancers kind of progress quickly, so when I didn't see it changing very quickly, I sort of just kind of put it on the back burner and didn't really think much about it. Then, earlier this past year, I thought I should probably have it looked at again because it had changed a little bit. So I asked my doctor for a referral to a dermatologist and six months later, I finally got the appointment and I went to it and my dermatologist sure enough said he'd like to remove this spot on my rib cage and also one on my back. When I had the stitches removed two weeks later, I discovered that while the one on my back was fine, the one on my rib cage was in fact an early stage melanoma. Thankfully, I'm kind of a science nerd and a biology nerd and a health nerd, just really a nerd in general. So I knew that an early stage melanoma or an early stage skin cancer is actually highly treatable. So I didn't freak out when he told me, but it was still really, really bizarre hearing the word cancer. It was scary in that sense. So at that appointment, my dermatologist said that the course of action would be to remove even more skin from my rib cage. So I ended up with an excision about this big on my rib cage that resulted in a pretty hefty scar. But quite frankly, like I would rather have a scar than skin cancer, so let's just get that out of the way. So shortly after being diagnosed, I made a couple of posts on Facebook about my experience and it prompted a lot of other people to go and have themselves looked at or have their sketchy moles or freckles that they'd been worried about looked at by their doctors. And sure enough, two friends came back and told me that they also had melanoma. Long story short, if you have any freckles on your body that you're concerned about, or heck, even if you've just never been screened before, go to your doctor and get screened. I cannot stress this enough. I thought that I was at pretty low risk for skin cancer. Even though I'm white, I'm pretty dark, and I go very, very dark in the summers. I'm not a redhead, I'm not blonde, um, and at least right now, I'm not spending a buttload of time in the sun. That being said, my parents have a pool, and when I was in middle school and high school, I spent every day in the summer by that pool, trying to get as dark as possible. Why was that a goal? Like, I should have had bigger goals in life than just being super dark. I was under the impression though as a kid that you couldn't really get skin cancer unless you burned. So I avoided burning and I just would use, you know, sunscreen at first in the first part of the summer and then as I got darker, I would stop using it and just like bake for days and months. So when I went to university, as some of you may know, I did an undergrad and a master's in molecular biology. Yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> and it was during one of my undergraduate classes where we were learning about how UV radiation damages your DNA. It causes something called thymine dimers to cross-link the DNA so that it can't be read. Um, and there actually is a really, really fascinating process that can repair this damage, but sometimes that doesn't happen and we end up with cancer as a result. So I acknowledge that I am extremely lucky that this was caught super duper early and I'm so, so thankful and so grateful that it was not a very, very fast progressing cancer. I will have to have yearly screens of my entire body to make sure that I don't have any other sketchy freckles or moles. Uh, so that's what happened here. I had a little freckle that had been growing back in 2012, removed cosmetically twice, and it came back like a second time. So my dermatologist is like, mm, 
Like, let's just, let's just get that checked out just in case, considering you now have a history. So yes, now I have to give a lot of thought to sun exposure because I do have a history. And let's face it, as photographers, we do tend to spend a lot of time outside in the sun in the summer. And quite frankly, I like rarely use sunscreen um, when I would work outside with my clients. So if you're in the same position as me, where you do spend a lot of time outside of the studio as well in the summer, please, Think about sunscreen, think about sun protection, and do get yourself checked out because you really just never know. The freckle that I had was really, really small, as you can see in the photos, and it really didn't progress into some kind of like catastrophic lesion that, you know, really made me worry. I was just kind of like, oh, this is a little different than the other ones that I have. And sure enough, it turned out to be cancer. And that tiny little freckle resulted in a really big scar. I scar hypertrophically, which means that my scar kind of like goes crazy and it overgrows. Um, so last week I had to get it injected with a steroid, not that kind of steroid, to make it calm down so that, you know, it can flatten out and actually heal properly. I've been showing the scar to like everybody to like really drive the point home that this happened to me and this tiny little freckle kind of a, was a big deal, a big enough deal to have like a seven centimeter scar on my rib cage. So the scar itself is kind of a talking point, which is pretty cool, I guess. And I'm totally comfortable talking about this with people and just raising awareness because really like if it could happen to me, it can happen to anyone. So please be vigilant. Check yourselves before you wreck yourselves. That's how you use that saying, right? I'm <laughs> so cool. So yeah, I'm going to keep it there for now. I'm gonna keep it pretty short. Thank you so much for joining. Please let me know if you've had a similar experience or you've had a close call yourself. I think this is actually a lot more common than we all realize and a lot of people just don't talk about it. And I think we need to start talking about it. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. And if it can help somebody else avoid a serious issue down the line, including death, then let's talk about it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining and have an awesome week. See you next week. Just kidding, video's not done yet. I wanted to take a moment to thank everybody who donated to the Canadian Cancer Society for my birthday fundraiser on Facebook. We raised $1,275. My goal was only a thousand. So we blew that out of the water. I have taken the hint and I will increase my goal next year. So get your checkbooks ready. So I just wanted to thank everybody who donated. Get ready for a little list here. Um, first of all, thank you to my mom and dad. Love you guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you to Kristen, Ryan, Crystal, Steven, Andrea, Lisa, Sonia, Eric and Dana, Rodrigo, Anna, Anita, Steve, Alex, Rosie, Tyler, Lynn, Joel, Alicia, Sharon, Brittany, Carrie, Nina, Barbara, Be Brian, Candace, Shannon, Dana, Sebastian, Angelina, Monique, Alicia, Karen, Jay, and Anya. Thank you all so, so, so much. I'm truly blown away. It meant so much to me that so many people donated to this fundraiser and continue to donate even after the goal was reached. Thank you so much. It's such an incredible cause. There was one summer where I actually worked in a lab uh, studying the molecules involved in the spreading of cancer. So I saw this money from the other end of the spectrum go to really good use. It truly is an incredible cause. Thank you so much. Please continue to be as generous as you all are. Okay, till next week, bye.